Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. Welcome to the expert session lecture series introduced by Academy of Restorative and Cosmetic Dentistry. Uh, today's topic of expert session lecture is examination and, and diagnosis. Uh, my name is Dr. Kashif Nayer. I am Dr. Zuhair. And I am Dr. Dilawar. So, uh, we start off uh, our examination and diagnosis with uh, history. <clears throat> so, I would like to ask Dr. Zuhair to uh, give his thoughts about uh, the importance of history. Dr. Zuhair. Thank you, Dr. Kashif. Uh, history is the most important thing in your clinical practice. As you know that, patients don't visit you until they have some pain. To know the reason of the pain is the main job of an endodontist. And believe me, patients don't tell you the real cause of the pain. They're just telling you, doctor, I have pain in that tooth. I have pain in the maxillary tooth. I have pain in all of my teeth. But as a clinician, as an endodontist, you have to work like an FBI officer. You have to investigate them. And the first, of, first important thing, you have to provide a patient a very relaxed environment. And if he has pain, you can give him anesthesia for the right time so that you can easily ask the questions and he can comfortably answer the things. So today we will tell our colleagues about uh, the five main things that we daily ask the patients uh, to know the reason of pain. And for that thing, I will go to Dr. Dilawar. He is a very good clinician and uh, he has, uh, he always, these questions are basically created by Dr. Dilawar and in sequence. So, I will like to ask Dr. Dilawar. I know he is laughing right now, so he will tell you in a better way. Yes, Dr. Dilawar, can you elaborate the things that I asked you? Thank you, Dr. Dilawar. Actually, the history is the basic fundamental for the diagnosis. So, for the history of pain, we are usually supposed to ask the close-ended questions like when, why, how the pain occurs and then the patient respond to you and then to take it to the close-ended questions don't make them elaborative don't make them bigger with yes or no the patient responds and to you make it narrower and narrower in, in your jigsaw and then finally you have to make your diagnosis for the pain and the patient presents with pain we ha usually have to diagnose that the pain is of endodontic origin or non endodontic origin so the usually questions will be when how why since when, provoking factors, relieving factors. Then we'll ask Dr. Kashif to add a few points in the history of pain. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Dilawar. I think uh, regarding history of pain, uh, if we go sequentially, uh, we have uh, uh, five questions which are very important. And if we ask our patients, just like you said, Dr. Dilawar, that we have to ask in a way, in a close-ended way, so patient can uh, answer us specifically. So uh, the five questions, uh, today we are going to discuss what are those five questions. So I'm going to start off uh, uh, with uh, the number one question, the commencement and onset. What do you mean by commencement and onset, Dr. Dilawar? Commencement and onset are the two basic terminologies used by a lot of dentists, but usually they don't know the meanings. Onset means since when it's hurting and since when it's beginning. And the commencement is the very first time it ever hurts. So usually our patients don't remember the ever first pain history uh, because they run to a clinic usually when it hurt them the most. Hmm, do you agree? Right. Yeah, I agree because uh, what happens that they uh, they have a history of uh, pain before, uh, but maybe they uh, haven't uh, given some thought and they uh, took some medications. It got relieved. Uh, maybe this is the reason. So uh, that's why they are always telling uh, what is the onset. So we have to. You mean that we have to reinforce. On the commencement? Dr. Zuhair, uh, Dr. Kashif, I can see Dr. Zuhair has uh, to say something very special here. So please. Please. That, uh, Dr. Kashif, Dr. Dilawar, thank you very much. Uh, I know the, you know, the onset is very important thing because uh, you ask the patient when the pain started. Sometimes they forget because possibly they might went to some dentist and had some medication, so pain stopped. So they forget the initial episode. And possibly they have a fight at home. Yes, possible. <laughs> yes, well, you are right. So 
that that the first thing that we have to ask when it started it was 10 years back and uh, then it started again in few days before so uh, in between these years what happened to him he took some medications or he did some the cultural things like he putting something medicine some Clothes. local vegetable and clog inside the tooth and the but pain stop just... but but as a clinician it's our duty we have to investigate the patient about the onset and uh, the next thing, the most important thing, according to me, is localizations. I yes. hope, Doctor Zair, you are asking about the dental pain yet. Yes, I am not asking about the personal life pains. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't believe in personal life pains. Life is full of uh, the happiness, and some sometimes you get worried about the things that are going on. So, second thing, love is localization. Yeah, it is indeed patient, very important. Yes, patient can localize the pain. Uh, believe me, in the initial situations, patient cannot localize. Yes, in a few days back. Yes, usually they have pain in the uppers yes. and they tell you the, the pain is in the lower. We don't have 32 pain centers in our brain. Yeah, yeah. So in few days back, a patient visited my clinic and said, Doctor, I have pain in the mandible and the maxilla as well. So should I open all these teeth? I don't think so. Doctor, so, do you talk about substance P with the patient or you just try to localize the pain? Yes, substance P is, is a different factor. But right now we are talking about either the patient localizing the pain or not and believe me the patient cannot localize yes. it's the initial stage you know yes. you cannot you can treat that case with some restorations and some and sometimes patient cannot localize means there is irreversible situations yeah within and within confined within pulp yes so you mean to say when it whenever it takes cold and hot he feels pain but yes. he cannot localize the tooth yes he cannot localize so so sometimes he localize means there is there's something advanced situations there is a necrosis going on. Mm. So, in both situations, we have to address the real problem of a patient. And patient, if patient is in a pain, you cannot you can, you cannot evaluate the real cause. First of all, you have to you have to give him a very comfortable environment. You have to inject something so he can talk to you in a in a normal way. Whatsoever it is, doctor here, it must be the guilt is trigeminal nerve. <laughs> no, I, I don't do try Because the, the patients sometimes a... misinterpret and the doctors take it literally. For example, uh, once a patient told me that Dr. Saab, it feels like an electric current. And he uh, complained to another doctor and he prescribed him Tagrol. Like a stabbing pain? Yeah, a stabbing pain. He, he just said that and the doctor took it literally and he prescribed him Tagrol and these kind of drugs. The pain was uh, basically of endodontic origin. And because of the severity, the patient complained in it's his own words. The, but the doctor misinterpreted. What do you say, Dr. Zuhair, about Dr. that? Gosh, if you know, a few, few months back, uh, we saw a patient, a female, 50, 59 years old female. She was just visited us a few years back. And she was taking the medication of trigeminal neuralgia. Yeah, I, I, I remember. And she took, she said me, I went to a dentist and she advised me that medication. Yes. And yes, then yes. she was taking that medication for th three years. Three on the years. Basis. Yeah, I remember that. Just visited us. Carbamethapine has been medical for a lot of dentists nowadays. Yes. Yeah, because it has some properties to diminish the pain. Yeah. It can diminish even the endodontic pain as well. But this is not a mm. correct diagnosis. But that patient had had the problem of periapical uh, redolescency in, in the in the premolar area. So we just opened the tooth, we treated that tooth, the next day patient was fine. So the problem is, as a dentist, we have to train the guys about the history you of You know, pain. Dr. Zahir, I usually tell my patients whenever he present them in a pain, that if there is a closed room and uh, there is a capacity of 10 people, and 50 people entered in that room. The room has to burst because there is no place for the people around. <laughs> yes. So it has to burst. So the next point is the provocation. Now, the provocation is very important. And uh, Dr. What Kashif, provokes uh, yeah, That the provokes pain. the pain. Like uh, what provokes me? Is it spontaneous? Uh, it, it, is it starts by itself? Or is it provoked by biting? Or is it provoked by uh, brain freeze during ice cream? Oh, there are a lot of ways by which a pain can be provoked. Like I simply say that Mr. Zuhair, you just provoke me. So yes, and my wife prov provoked me whenever I do something bad. So she just say something in a, in a very good way that I get angry and then I get out of the home. So everything, everything, sometimes you have the provocation there. So just like Lover said that in case of pain, there's a provocation. Provocation can be by means of the hot fluids by means of the cold fluids, by means of some biting forces, so whatever, you have to ask the patients which thing that hurts more to him. It can or, be either by lying down or standing up. Yes. At either we can from cold air. Yes. At 
either from uh, saying prayers at high altitudes in scuba divers even yes uh, the better receptors mechanisms yes. so provocation is an important factor but sometime hmm. dr lawar patient come to you and said we get relieved with the cold fluids there is a typical example for certain cases yes uh, so sometimes the pain is spontaneous there are no provocating factors so uh, whenever uh, the situation is like that we have to consider that there is something pulpal going on yeah definitely uh, so maybe it is a case of irreversible pulpitis because uh, uh, in cases of irreversible pulpitis uh, the pain sometimes starts off spontaneously yeah and dr kashif you know that uh, you have seen a picture in the books when when a man standing with the cup of the cold water hmm. it's a typical case of the necrosis and necrosis ah, yes. exactly exactly so, so the next point is intensity that is let us know the intensity of the love have you ever have you guys ever fall in love have do you know the intensity of the love yes dr lover I, i i know the intensity of the love sometimes <laughs> you get depressed sometimes you get hot it's just if you are you have you, cold if are you talking you about the seasonal love or the true love seasonal love it's not about true love <laughs> so the intensity does matters intensity yeah of course because uh, in certain reversible situations there is intense pain yeah uh, and in certain uh irreversible situation there is no pain at all uh, in, the intensity is less in the bible so, of uh, anodontics ingle it's written dental pulp is so amazing sometimes you hit it with an axe it don't respond and on the contrary you look it in the cross eye and that <laughs> it hurts <laughs> <laughs> yes and you know dr kashif uh, you just talking about the intensity so the one thing i mean in mind that when you have a temporary love you have low intensity when you have a permanent love like in the marriage you don't have pain then then there is but no you love. have some you have some so you have some brain issues so <laughs> that that's the most serious thing <laughs> no i have four kids yeah. <laughs> i love <laughs> my family come by the method of love <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, duration is very important uh including all these questions because this duration is distinguishing between a lot of things what do yeah. you say dr dilawar yeah if the duration is short we can actually suspect the reversible pulpitis and uh, if the duration is longer then it must be reversible and if it's more longer it can be necrosis apicalapsis and apical periodontitis dr zair what do you have to say so patient when they just present to you and say doctor i have pain about few seconds and they just goes off when i don't do something like don't take some fluid so it's a possible a cause of reversible one but if the patient has pain about 10 second 20 seconds and it's just linger on with some stimulus so it might be a reversible one but if patient has no pain and the clinical examination shows you that there is some pathology there it might be necrosis you know initial necrosis is sterilized necrosis because patient has no pain at that time but then the situation gets worse and when there is a big swelling and patient comes to you with a severe pain with some cup of the cold water there so duration is also very important part of the history very very so uh, we we should know all these questions so in of a clinical practice the more the duration is the tougher the case is yes exactly exactly so sometimes uh, the patients are complaining um, that we can combine these symptoms yeah. together uh, with the history for example uh, the pain of high intensity of short mm. duration what do you think guys what could be that that is the dental pain usually uh, usually it's a dental pain but usually a reversible, reversible kind of pain yeah. it's a reversible kind of pain if treated on time yeah. it, the situation can be reversed but uh, if just taken it's lingered on with the help of medications the situation may get worse yeah because a delta fibers are responding in such scenarios and if it gets more intense and the duration get bigger so then c fibers get activated and let me tell you one thing in case of reversible patient mostly have one complaint they have some pain when they bite something when they when they take some food they have pain they have some cold and hot sensitivity so in such situation situations we can easily restore these teeth we don't need to have to go to some root canal therapy in such situations so uh, in a summary uh, the commencement or onset we must know if the pay, if the pain is acute or chronic and uh, if we talk about uh, localization uh is the pain is localized or diffused, diffused? uh provocation is it stimulus uh, spontaneous or is it provoked with uh, some stimulus for example in this situation if the pain is diffused 
and provocation is spontaneous you can simply answer that this is a case of irreversible pulpitis or uh, intensity mild or severe maybe the intensity is severe but uh, the duration is short transient it is telling us that it is a reversible type of situation i like to add something here yeah please, uh, please if there is a history of medication in my patients i take it as a thumb rule i take them to irreversible pulpitis cases because whenever there is a history of medication there is something wrong in the pulse but dr lover believe me you have to ask the patient to stop the medications you cannot take the history when the patient is medicated you have to stop the medication and ask him the next day without medication so uh. you can better address the situation there so can we say 80% of the anodontic diagnosis is by these five questions and it after uh, in all the situations believe me one thing in case of reversible the situation is just to restore the tooth in case of irreversible you have to do the root canal therapy in case of the necrosis you have the root canal therapy but believe one thing important is that in case of mature teeth when there is a pulp exposure there is no reason to do the pulp capping you always go with the root canal therapy but in case of immature tooth when the apex is open patient has a pulp exposure you can attempt the revascularization you can attempt the regeneration you can attempt even the pulp capping there use a bioceramics yes. if they are indicated in a situation yes. otherwise in such pains thrill of fillers must do <laughs> yes so thank you so much guys for your time uh, we will see you on our next expert session lecture on diagnosis examination and diagnosis so stay home guys have thank a good so time much.